Cool. So good morning and welcome to Manchester Film Festival. Uh, here with the crew of Red Sky at Night, which is screening at Northwest Shorts 1 this morning. If you could be so kind as to tell us a little bit about yourselves and your role on the film. Uh, so my name's uh, Kieran Stringflow and I was the director and writer of Red Sky at Night. I'm Tasha Williams and I was the producer. I'm George Haydock, I was the DOP on Red Sky at Night. Um, so the film is kind of a, a vampire road movie uh, about a kind of um, 100 year old vampire who you know appears more like 20 years old finally moving out of her family house uh, to go to university and it's essentially about kind of uh, moving out of, of your family home and the kind of how it's such a monumental moment experienced through contrasting emotions so you know every other I guess milestone like birthday or a funeral like birthday is happy you know kind of celebration a funeral is a sad kind of celebration whereas moving out is kind of there's one time where we've got the parents who are mourning I guess the loss of a child through in the sense of them moving out and a, and a kind of child who is kind of I guess in that kind of celebration of moving on to the next chapter in life so the film is a kind of exploration of um, that kind of journey I guess and with a vampire twist which not necessarily for the bloodlust but because of the kind of eternity of age and how it really exaggerated the conflict of a parent losing their child after 100 years and you know a child moving out after 100 years and how excited they would be to move on so yeah Thank you. I think there are probably two types of horror films. I mean, there's probably a lot more than that, but fundamentally there's two. There's ones that are scary because they enjoy being scary, but there's also horror films that use horror as a vehicle to talk about real issues. And I found it really interesting how Red Sky at Night used kind of horror tropes to draw on just how surreal family interactions can be sometimes. Was that something that was conscious in your mind when you were writing and making the film? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, kind of, you know, with the vampire element and the kind of the black and white shooting choice, it was kind of about you know, this very kind of stale family who, after spending hundreds of years together in this, in this one place, have kind of grown so kind of distant from each other because of that amount of time. And, you know, use, leaning into the kind of horror of that, you know, to show how families can break down and how the people you love can become people that you want to get away from, you know. And I think, like, maybe George, you can talk about, like, the visual style of it. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so I think um, the genre twist of them being vampires just presented, like, a really great opportunity to play with those kind of visuals um, to, to draw inspiration from like expressionism and like hard lighting and just to really like you know develop the world that they inhabit um, but also like I was trying not to go too far with it to keep sensitive because it's ultimately quite like a humanistic uh, story quite a gentle sensitive story I think um, so yeah, we you know we're trying to bear that in mind as well. Yeah, it's finding a balance between between those those two styles. Yeah, I think one of the things I also picked up on it was the way in which we, as people, humans or vampires, I guess, um, time is relentless for everyone, and even though they in many ways stay in the same moments and cling on to them, like things move forward and even after not to spoil the film and um, the girl goes to university she ends up coming back and looking at those precious memories and she even her always her journey still wants to be part of that unit even though it's presented as dysfunctional yeah. again is that something that was conscious something that you wanted to exhibit or is it just something that the kind of characters said to you as you were creating them um, well i think with that it was kind of a big thing was about you know this character who has spent 100 years at home you know and kind of kind of grown disillusioned with her family and wants to kind of break free and kind of form her own shadow, you know, form her own kind of wings. But ultimately, when she kind of gets that realisation of moving out and she's, she, you know, she's kind of, there is that element of, you know, family's always there and that's always important and kind of, you know, regardless of, you know, of what you do in your kind of, you know, in your adult life, like, they're there to come back to and, and those memories are the kind of things that you'll always linger on, which, you know, is a massive part of, I guess, you know, the element of the exaggerated time of, of, their, of you know, them being vampires. The memories become more kind of far and few between because you know there's the stretch over time but they're more poignant i guess in the and that, that's kind of something we wanted to redraw on in the film it, it, why we kind of chose the vampire element of it to exaggerate what it's like i guess you know in the more human sense so yeah for sure awesome awesome um changing track slightly what was it like working with napoleon's own anna morn <laughs> Um, yeah, she, I mean, she was great. Like uh, we kind of uh, were really lucky to get her on board, um, thanks to our casting director uh, yeah. Claire Bleasdale. Um, we kind of we did a we auditioned like I think 20, 20 or twelve. Yeah, kind of, like, there was like, a fair, fair few different um, candidates, and, and they were all brilliant. But I think Anna 
had this ability. And it's, it's interesting because she's been in Napoleon uh, and also Firebrand, which is coming out yeah. um, soon with Jude Law and Alicia Vikander, both period pieces. And that's what it was about her visual look is she looks young in one sense, but also has that, that kind of face that looks like it's been around. Timeless yeah, timeless yeah. face, yeah. So um, Yeah, she's just fantastic. I think all of the cast were incredible. I think we really lucked out there on that, like... They all worked really well. They'd never met before we started shooting, but I think that worked really well because they were quite cold with each other and it was, it was perfect. Yeah, great. Awesome, thank you. So before I let you go, um, you're part of North White Shorts, which has sold out. We're going to make people queue up for any little seats that might be left, which is amazing. What would you guys queue up for yourselves personally? Oh, I'll use that. <laughs> Filming-wise? Film -wise, oh. What, here right now? Like, anything. Any film? Ooh. We're going to see Sweet East, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to see Sweet East. I think, um, I mean, one film, it's not, it's not, not in this festival, is it films that are on this festival or in general? Honestly, your choice. Like, <laughs> what, okay, I mean, what to would fair, you stand outside in the rain for? We're all like, quite excited for the restoration of Days of Heaven yeah, coming out oh, soon. Actually, that's true. That's we're going to go see that together. Yeah, I think that's get, we, keep, we keep seeing it get pushed back. Yeah. That's one that I'm excited to see yeah. on the big screen, of having only seen it in, in on TV. So, of yeah. course, as well, I'm also excited to see Love Lies Bleeding here later this week. So, oh, yeah, yeah. I am excited for that too. That'd be good. And also, I would queue in the rain and the thunder <laughs> to see uh, a 70 mil print of the Tree of Life. Oh, so let's yeah. let's start the campaign today. Yeah, that's true. Cool. Thank you. And finally, what is next for you guys individually and for Red Sky at Night? Um, so oh, we're Red Sky at Night. We're kind of very, this, this is the first uh, festival yeah. for us. It's our world premiere in Manchester where we shot it, which is yeah. great. Um, so yeah, we've got kind of got hopefully a really you know kind of good festival run to look forward to. Um, we're still waiting back on, on other festivals. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, me and Tasha have just finished uh, work on a new project um, yeah. for BBC, which uh, we've not coming out for a long time, but um, that was we're kind of finished finish up on that and we're just in development on our next, next short. Next you know, yeah. yeah. So we're kind of just in the very early stages of that. Also, you know, kind of developing longer form ideas, but yeah. they're very more down the line. Um, yeah. But yeah, what, what about George? What are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm currently in pre-production of a new short film, um, which is called Uncool, um, which is a period film. Movie. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's set in 1909 um, in Lancashire. Uh, so it's a period film, but it's kind of drawing influence from kind of noughties, teenage, coming of age film. So it's a bit of a, a genre bender as well. Um, which you know we're hopefully shooting in the next couple of months so um, you never know it might be uh, available to see next year who knows yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> awesome thank you very much thank you. Good, thank you. Thanks, cool. uh, 